something that will make you think twice about those stereotypes. It's the story of an unlikely rock band and how they've managed to transcend politics, culture, and religion, all in the name of music. It's Saturday night in Karachi as Pakistan's biggest rock band takes the stage. As they do once or twice a month, Janoon is playing to a standing room crowd. Girls are going crazy. They've been called the U2 of Pakistan for their sweeping sound and social conscience. They've sold five million albums worldwide. They're superstars. And like most success stories, it didn't happen overnight. There's a saying in Pakistan that mass murderers have more respect than musicians. When I was growing up, uh, it was basically the days of martial law, famous generals. Yala came and he stopped any sort of um, creative, uh, artistic sort of movement just to please the you know, fundamentalists. It was kind of frustrating. Music of any sort was looked upon as something which was just not to be tolerated. And any gig you did, these guys would come, and in the name of religion, were just creating mass terror in the city. During the 80s, the U.S. government gave arms to Muslim rebels fighting the Soviet army in Afghanistan. Along with the guns came a flood of American pop culture. You see, even in the Coca-Cola. <laughs> After the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, America walked away from Afghanistan and Pakistan, leaving a legacy of violence and many who felt betrayed by the West. Unbelievable. I mean, students were armed to the teeth with these automatic weapons. <laughs> That anger spawned Osama bin Laden and the Taliban, but it also inspired musicians Salman Ahmed and Ali Azmat to offer an alternative. The first political statement that I made was that I got a rock band together. They called themselves Janoon, meaning passion. <laughs> I wanted to sing about the social disparity, the violence of our society. I wanted to articulate those issues through music. Newspapers can't do it. The state television was controlled. Music was one way to subvert all that in these people's souls. Salman, who had lived in America as a teenager, asked his high school friend Brian O'Connell to come join Pakistan's one and only rock and roll band. My life changed significantly back in 1991. I am proud to be an American, but I also love Pakistan. Gradually, Janoon built up a following with young Pakistanis, and by the mid-90s, they were playing to 25,000 fans in crowded arenas. There's some fans outside of Ali and Salman in the corner. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Oh, on your side. Are you gonna wash it? No. <laughs> but as more and more lined up to hear them, the government began to feel threatened. I was sent like guards to beat me up, intelligence agencies tapping my phone, death threats. That stuff's been happening for so long. We're like musical gorillas. Dil ruba, dil nasheen, dil or haseen. Salman wrote a song uh, titled Eta Saab, which translates into accountability. And there was a video made for it as well. What that served as was kind of a mirror being held up to the politicians who were in office at the time, and they took it a little personally. The video mocked the corruption of Pakistan's ruling elite, notably Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. One of her aides called me up, he said, are you com committing suicide, Salman? Here we are, you know, we are the hand that feeds you, and you're biting us? And I said, f*** you, mother When Janoon got themselves banned from state-run television in Pakistan, you know, it was a total ban. It's not like a ban in the U.S. where 
Madonna gets one of her videos pulled from a cable channel, it's certainly much more difficult in Pakistan when you face that kind of censorship. Establishment was going a certain way for many, 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 many years, and all of a sudden there's a youth platform. So the government clearly saw that as a threat. So yeah, out of like 11 years with Janoon, we've been banned for like seven. The ban made Janoon even bigger countercultural heroes. Soon, they were among the most popular celebrities in Pakistan. Seventy million kids just went totally crazy when they saw rock concerts starting to take place. When you're 20, 21 years old, and you have girls who are going crazy for you, you go through this sort of, uh, I'm a god, you know, I'm a legend in my own mind sort of a thing. Janoon's message of peace and tolerance also resonated in neighboring India. But there was a problem. The two countries, mortal enemies for more than 50 years, were now pointing nuclear weapons at each other. We're gonna go to Delhi, so it's gonna be quite an interesting ride. The West and the East. And the twain shall never meet. The <laughs> Sayon. Man, the government's gonna freak out, man. Freak out! One foot in each country. <laughs> Janoon's impact in India was so great that on the nation's 1998 V Music Awards, they beat out global superstars the Backstreet Boys and Prodigy for the Best International Group Award. To, to go and be number one on MTV India, you know, and totally, totally, totally take over that country by storm. A lot like how the Beatles came to America. But the difference was that America wasn't at war with uh, England. There should be cultural fusion, not nuclear fu fusion. But on the same trip, Janoon ran into trouble when they loudly denounced the nuclear arms race. When you're an artist, you know, when you go play in America or, you know, anywhere in the world or you play in India, you just basically, uh, I have lost my nationality that way, you know. Back home in Pakistan, they were branded as traitors and charged with treason. The problem was not really nuclear disarmament. The problem was that Janoon had broken through in, in India. I went out and, and, and I challenged them. I said, okay, bring every interview, every statement that we made in the newspapers, Put it on national television, which you control, and if, if the people of Pakistan decide that yes, we are traitors, we're willing to be hung for that. In 1999, a military dictator seized power in Pakistan. He wasn't very democratic, but his relatives liked Janoon's music, so he agreed to lift their radio, TV, and concert bans. Uh, Ironically, the band dedicated to challenging authority suddenly had the ear of high-ranking government officials. We need 100 minutes airtime at, uh, at 9.30. We do whatever we can in terms of uh, subsidizing or anything else. But after September 11th, being a rock star suddenly wasn't the best job to have in Pakistan. Janoon's world was about to change forever. Coming up, the band decides to help out in any way they can. We came to pay condolences to all the people who lost their lives in that terrible tragedy of September 11th. Janoon, the biggest rock band in South Asia, was devastated by the events of September 11th. Because guitarist Salman Ahmad and bass player Brian O'Connell grew up here, the band has a deep and powerful connection to New York City. I was like speechless, I think. What am I supposed to say? The roots that I grew here were, I mean, so many great memories of, uh, you know, Going to Beatles Fest in New York City, go, you know, going to the village to buy bootlegs. New York City, I call it spiritual hometown. You know, the CBGBs, going to the Garden to see concerts, and, you know, the friends I have. I couldn't possibly 
grasp the idea that something of that magnitude could happen in New York. My brother-in-law is a New York City fireman, and he lost a lot of his colleagues in the rescue attempts. They were the first people down there, and they were the first people to go. As the world splits between East and West, the band members feel caught in the middle. In addition to the planes who were hijacked and the innocent victims, my religion was hijacked by these terrorists. And these terrorists only bow to the gods of hate, fanaticism, and bigotry. So it pisses me off. We need to uh, show to the world that Pakistan is not about religious fanaticism or fundamentalism. It's not like that. It's just the picture that you see. The band responds to the tragedy the only way they know how, by playing music for peace. All we are saying is give peace a chance. On October 9th, John Lennon's birthday, Janoon plays a benefit concert for Afghan refugees in Islamabad. For me, w uh, the inspiration was John Lennon and the Beatles, who, through their music, they shaped society. It was a rebellion, and that's what I believed in. You know, that music is the most subversive force on, on the face of the earth. It's a defining cultural moment, East meets West a song from the Vietnam era being used to protest another war in South Asia. As Janoon cranks the volume and the fans rise to sing along, it may seem like a typical Western rock concert, but this crowd is made up entirely of women. In Pakistan, public gender mixing is seen as offensive, so to reach many of their fans, Janoon frequently performs at women's colleges. In the conservative culture, um, outward romantic expression is frowned upon. We have access because of our status. Thus, there these chicks aren't about you know oops I did it again their hearts and souls are resonating with much deeper issues so why do you think uh, America is not liked by the rest of the world what I ask you we feel for the people who died but what about the other people they don't think about others all they think about is themselves when the band decides to perform in New York to help the World Trade Center victims, many of their mainstream Muslim fans feel betrayed. I put up on my website that we're doing a fundraiser for the terrorist attacks in, in New York. And because of the hate crimes happening against Muslims, a lot of Janunis were offended by the fact that, why do you want to go and uh, help them? There's death threats on the phone every once in a while. People do not understand the value of human life, the value of freedom. In late October, amid a flurry of death threats and anti-Muslim hate crimes, the band heads to New York. Right now people are just like, really quiet. The vibe is very, very cold and that's very discouraging for me because it just breaks my heart. Once again, Janoon is caught in the middle, despising Osama bin Laden and the terrorists, but also resenting the way Muslims are portrayed in the American media. Not surprisingly, the outspoken Salman soon finds himself on TV defending his culture. It's a war against fundamentalism. Islam. Oh, excuse me. Now, I have something yes, against fundamentalism. The reason I wanted to say this to you is because somebody like me won't be on the show that often. Prayer, right. charity, fasting and the pilgrimage that's fundamentalism okay all right i'm using it in the in the sense that we here in america think of islamic fundamentalism which is the portion of that religion which says fly planes into buildings okay and the, and that's what i'm talking about so you call it what you want i admire him a lot for doing that show because obviously he was on with four westerners i believe sal is delusional i don't believe there's a big difference between moderates and extremists not in the muslim world music can serve as all art can 
in a way to show people their commonality, is it going to solve the problem? No. After holding it together all week, Janoon's emotions finally get the best of them at the World Trade Center benefit. We came to pay condolences to all the people who lost their lives in that terrible tragedy of September 11th. And I think in addition to that, this is a way to soothe our own wounds. We really have been torn apart watching this tragedy from 10,000 miles away. The song loosely translates into the line, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> The irony of raising money for peace in a country where many see them as potential terrorists isn't lost on the members of Janoon. Time to raise the stakes at a history-making concert in New York City. Coming up, a sea of diplomats transformed by the power of rock and roll. Mr. Kofi Annan told us that the most hippest crowd in the UN audience. Come on, loosen up those ties. Success hasn't come easy for the Pakistani rock band Janoon. They've been criticized by Muslim fundamentalists for playing allegedly blasphemous music. And they've been banned twice by their own government for their views on corruption and nuclear disarmament. Despite all that, over the past decade, they've managed to build a global following. At a 1998 show in New York, thousands of fans mobbed the stage, turning Central Park into a temporary Pakistani village. Assalamu alaikum, New York! Pakistan represent every time. Peace. Peace. But after the events of September 11th, many in the West now view all Muslims with suspicion. Wait, let me get this right. You mean to tell me that terrorists are Muslims and Arabs? Well, yeah, that's who they are. Janoon decides to make an unprecedented statement of global unity by performing on the world's only truly neutral stage. The song is about love. I'm here at the UN on UN Day and I'm uh, going to go meet Mr. Shashi Tharoor. On October 27th, they become the first rock band to play a concert at the UN General Assembly Hall. Shashi, is it true this is the first time it's a rock concert at the UN? First, first, first rock concert. Yes. Kofi Annan will be, have to get used to some uh, long haired musicians playing loud rock. We are blessed in what we are about to see and hear this evening to mark the United Nations Day. The noon brings its mystical Sufi vibrations to a crowd that could use a little loosening up. Like to sing with me? Come on! Mr. Kofi Annan told us that the most hippest crowd in the UN audience. You guys have a huge challenge. You have to loosen up your ties. Come on, loosen up those ties. they've traveled 7,000 miles for. Hundreds of UN officials slowly lose their inhibitions and are transformed into Janunis. I don't think that in 54 years the General Assembly Hall has seen anything like this. Thank you to Janun and thank you all for coming. Have a great night and let the message of peace go from here. <laughs> There's a peace, there's a solution. <laughs>